So I had my mastectomy. I went to have my first chemo. I couldn't have it because my blood work was too high. My levels weren't right. So he said, before you come for chemo, come in every day for three hours and we're gonna give you this drug. So I came in and had an IV drug for three hours, vancomycin, to raise my levels, which it did, and then I went and had my chemo. So that was great. Then I had my second chemo, and um, the second day after my second chemo, I got a fever and chills, and I had all these problems, and they had found out that I had got a really bad infection in surgery of my mastectomy. That's why my levels weren't good for my first chemo. So by this time, it was my second chemo, and it wasn't great. My surgeon was out of town. I went in. Mike was out of town. My mom was there. And my sister was there. And this little, um, his side surgeon told me that I had to have an emergency surgery and they were gonna take everything out. So when you have a mastectomy, they put expanders in. This is TMI for you men, but here we go. They put expanders in and that's how you uh, get reconstruction. Well, you have eight weeks of four drains hanging out that you have to measure, which Bruce had to measure these gross drains every day for six weeks, like five times a day. So when I went in there, he said, we have to take everything out and we're gonna put new drains in. And I was like, hold on, we're not doing that. I'm not doing that. I said, I just had chemo yesterday. My body is at the very worst place it could be. And now you're gonna tell me we're gonna go in and take everything out and I can't have reconstruction. And why in the heck did I do that for eight weeks? I was just an absolute mess. And my surgeon wasn't there. And he said, we have to take you in right now because you are so low that if this infection spreads in your body, you'll, you'll die so fast. And I'm just like, what? And he's like, I'll let you talk to your sister for a minute. I'm going, what? So she left and I'm like, damn, oh my gosh. And so I kind of started crying. Well, if I remember, I told you that during my, um, so I'm telling you the two miracles that I think are miracles. Um, so when Riker died, I kept saying, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So at Christmas time, McCall sent me in the mail a, bra a bracelet. And in Riker's handwriting, it said, it's going to be okay. And it was just my favorite little bracelet. I should have it on. And it just said, love Riker. And I loved it. So anyway, I wore it every day. So I'm in there. The surgeon's there. And I'm talking to him. And I'm like, whatever. My gosh, so he came back in, he said, how you feel? I'm like, I guess I'm just gonna do this. He said, I just talked to your regular surgeon. He said, you can't wait for him tonight. He's coming in at six. We have to do it right now. I said, okay. And I was just, okay, whatever. I, was just, I said, can I get a blessing? I can't find anybody. My dad's gone, my husband's gone. And he said, I'll give you a blessing if you want me to. I was like, you're gonna give me a blessing. <laughs> he was so cute. He said, yeah, and I said, will you bless yourself? And he was like, yes, I'll bless myself. He's like, but will you please just get dressed and get down there? I'm like, okay, and I just sat there and I had my eyes closed and he put his hand on mine and he said, Jody? I said, yeah, and he took his fingers and he said, it's gonna be okay. And I don't know why, but when he did that, it's like this umbrella of the spirit just came in the room. I looked at my sister, and Dad was like, did he just do that? So I said, oh, thank you. So I told him a little bit, and then he started crying, I started crying. I said, okay, thank you. And then ripped down to the, or the OR room. When we walked in, it said the nurse was RN, and it said McCall. I'm like, of course, McCall's on the board. I'm like, thank you. And right then my dad came in, he'd been at the temple, he had his pink cancer tie mm -hmm. on, and I'm so grateful because he gave me a blessing in December and he died the following nine months later. And I am so grateful that he got to give me that blessing. And in that blessing, he said, um, you are God's daughter and you are mine. And I will never forget that forever. And I feel like that was a little miracle that I got him to give my blessing. And I feel like it was a miracle that, that my doctor had my breast up. The reason I tell you that is because then I went into the hospital for six days and they shaved my head in the hospital. So when I went in there, I had regular kind of hair, but my hair had, had started to fall out. So we shaved it um, on a Sunday night. Monday I came home, Bruce went to work and I hadn't showered. I hadn't 
they shaved my hair Sunday head Sunday night so I just got up I thought I'm ready to go get in the shower and I went to get in the shower and I was like oh my gosh and it was hard it was I, I just looked at myself I couldn't even and I thought oh my gosh I didn't think it would be this hard and I thought whoo I started to breathe like whoo okay all right can I do this and uh I got in the shower and the whole time I was showering I was thinking, okay, so I can never look at myself ever again. Or I can really look at myself and cope with it and figure out a strategy. Or I can, I can't remember what my third option was, but anyway, I got out and I thought, okay, I'm gonna really look at myself. And I looked at myself and I thought, that's not you. And I just kept getting closer and closer and I leaned in really close and I found my eyes. And I said, oh, there you are. And I thought, okay, I'm just gonna only look at myself really, really close to the mirror and look in my eyes, cause that's where I found myself. And so I thought, okay, I'm good. So I walked back out, got my robe on, and I was like, huh, oh, huh. Oh. Like, I am not doing well. And I just said, Heavenly Father above, I thought I was gonna be able to do this, but I really can't do this by myself today. I need help. I need help right now. And I literally said right now, I need some help. And I heard Mike say, hey sis, to the point where I went like this, seriously? Like I just wasn't crying. I went, seriously? And I was like, hi Mike. And he said, he had just known that I'd shaved my head. And so he just had not been at the hospital. He knew I'd shaved my head the day before. And he said, I came around the corner and I'd just been crying and he said, hey, I just came to tell you that you were beautiful. And I just looked at him and he had flowers and he had a watermelon. And in my mind, I thought, my brother, he just said my brother. And I knew that was a divine thought because he was there in his shirt and tie on a Thursday at 11 o'clock. And he sat down and we laughed and we talked and I totally got through that moment and I really didn't have another one like that again. I was absolutely fine. I, I just accepted it. But for that hour, it was rough. And I do. I know that God sent my brother at that moment. For, that was a miracle. Those are the things that happen over and over again. Those cool miracles.